Now, there are two other functionals over lists that are also very important um, and are used regularly. And one interesting thing about them is that uh, they're closely related to map. Uh, the, those are fold left and fold right. And first, let's look at fold left. And fold left and, in fact, also fold right are um, functionals that are found in the standard prelude of Haskell. Fold left, which we'll describe first, takes a binary function, a current form, an accumulator, and a list and produces a value. So if our binary function is plus, uh, takes an x and a y and adds x to y, then we would expect that if we use fold l uh, with the plus function and the initial value 0 and the list 1, 2, 3, 4, we would add 1, 2, 3, and 4, and that would give us 10. So let's see how we can implement this in Haskell uh, as fold L prime. Fold L prime is a function that should take a function f and an initial value a and some list and um, then reply, uh, apply f successively to the elements of the list. If there are no elements, in the list, we just return the initial value. If fold left prime is applied to f at the initial value x, a and a non empty list of x and some further x's, what do we get? Well, the idea is that first we apply f to a and the first element of the list, and then we take this and we fold with f and the initial value is now this and the list for which this is the initial value is the tail xs. So let's take that as our implementation of fold little prime, send this to Haskell. So what happens if we take fold L prime and apply it to the plus function. We can write the plus function in this way by taking the plus symbol and putting it in parentheses and using zero as the initial value and then one, two, three, four. What do we get? Well, we got 10. Um, and that's what we would expect. Um, but what is the type of fold L prime? Let's figure that out now. Now, uh, what is the type of fold L prime? Now, fold left prime is a higher order function. Its um, first argument is a function, f, and f is a function that takes two arguments. We see that here, f is applied to an a and an x. So, um, this function must have type t1 to t to some to some t2 here. And then we also see that the next argument to which fold L prime is applied is the initial value. And the type of the initial value must then be t1. So uh, It's T1 here. And next, the argument we get is a list. And it's a list of elements of type T. Because this is a list of second arguments, we see that we're applying the second argument uh, from the list one at a time. So this is t list and what do we get well we get um, something that's of the type of a we can see that and the type of a is t1 so this should be t1 
Now there's a further simplification we can make because if we look at this, this is the return type of F and um, we can see that uh, the return type of F is um, it's actually just T1. So here we should write T1. So that's the type of fold L prime according to what we figured out. Let's see what Haskell says about this. Now what is the type of fold R prime? Well let's see. Um, fold R prime takes three arguments. The first argument, uh, which we here call f, is a function uh, of type t to t1 to t2. We'll figure out what t1 and t2 are in a moment. Um, and then the next argument takes is something, the initial value of type T3, and then we take an argument of list type, and to figure out what the list type is, and we'll figure that out in a moment, uh, T4, uh, we'll need to look at what the result type is also. What is the result type? It's some T5. Um, but what is T5 first? Let's see. Um, we can see from the first clause, we can see here, that um, the result type of fold R is the type of A, so that's type of T1. So this is really T1. So that's the first thing we notice. Now, um, what about the type here? What kind of type do we have here? What, what's the type T4? Well, um, it's um, clear from this that X, uh, it's X has type T4, and we see that F takes two arguments, and the first one is X. So this is really just T. Um, now, what about T3 then? Well, um, let's see here. Um, this is the type of, of the initial value A, but that's also what appears here. And A has type T1, so this T3 is just T1. This is T1. Now what about T2 then? Well, um, we can see from what we have here that um, F takes two arguments. The first one has type T. Second one has type T1. And the result of applying F to these two arguments is uh, something of type uh, the return type of fold R, and we know that's T1, so this T1 is just T1. So that's the type of fold R prime. Let's see what Haskell would like to say about that. If F is a commutative and associative function, folding it with fold left and fold right and a given accumulation uh, initial value will always yield the same result. But otherwise, this is not the case. Okay, um, so what's the relationship between map and fold? As it turns out, uh, map is really just a special uh, application of folding. More precisely, to get uh, map or map prime, as it were, uh, we can we can uh, use fold right with uh, the function that takes an argument and the initial value, or accumulate as we also call it, and then apply f 
to the initial value and cons it onto the accumulator and the accumulator should then just be the empty list um, because then we can we can map the the elements one by one by starting off with the initial value being the empty list so um, there's really no need to have map as long as we have full write.